Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program today. Our guest is Tricia Pignata. She's nurse practitioner with Neurology Associates and MS Center of Greater Orlando. And she's here today to talk with us about multiple sclerosis nursing and also about um, her activities with My Support Hero. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Tricia Pegnata. Thank you so much, Neil. Now, you're a, you're a nurse practitioner. Uh, you're um, an MS nurse specifically. Um, have you always been involved with multiple sclerosis nursing, or is this something that developed um, during your career as a nurse? It developed uh, during my career as a nurse. I've been a nurse for um, better than 30 years, but uh, started early with neurologic conditions and then um, I fell in love with the MS population. So I've been doing that for um, better than 15 years now. How many people would you say are affected uh, worldwide by uh, MS? There's uh, 2.3 million persons approximately worldwide affected by MS. Could you explain to me some of the most, I guess, common symptoms of multiple sclerosis? Okay. Well, the most common symptoms in, um, are visual symptoms where persons either have a change in the clarity of their vision, pain with moving their eyes, desaturation of color. They can also have um, sensory symptoms on um, a particular side of their body or just one limb of their body. And, and sometimes those sensory symptoms can also be in the trunk of their body. So like a banding pain uh, around their abdomen. Um, weakness is a common symptom where they are, are weak um, in one or multiple extremities. And that um, oftentimes produces gait difficulties. And there are um, painful symptoms that can occur. Um, persons can have some cognitive uh, difficulties and bowel and bladder problems. Fatigue is um, one of the number one symptoms. Now, you mentioned some, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some vision uh, indicators. Are these indicators something that can be, uh, say you go to your, your doctor for an eye exam, you tell him about your blurred vision or some of the, the losing color and things of that nature. Is he going to be able to run a certain test or be able to tell that these this is an onset of MS or is he going to need to refer you someone else just to be sure? Well, uh, in the case of a optometrist, it might be a little more difficult um, because they don't have the sensitive equipment that an ophthalmologist would have to be able to look at the optic nerve, the thinning of the optic nerve. But since optic neuritis, which is the visual symptoms I was describing for you, um, is one of the very um, common symptoms of multiple sclerosis, if a person Again, this disease um, affects persons very early in their life. So if someone between the ages of 20 and 40 presents to an ophthalmologist or even an optometrist with the symptoms that are more suggestive of an optic nerve lesion, that's going to trigger those individuals to either refer them to a neurologist or to at least get an MRI of their brain, um, and that will help us see whether or not they have any of these classic lesions that occur from multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic neurologic disease where the immune system starts attacking the nerves in your central nervous system and you get scars on those nerves. Those scars we can see on MRIs. And so an MRI is one of the... Um, test that helps us um, diagnose and monitor how persons are doing with multiple sclerosis. When it comes to diagnosing MS, how long does it take to get the, the proper diagnosis? Because uh, are some of these symptoms can be attributed to other things, other dis less severe disorders, I I'm sure. Is that the case or am I mistaken? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're not at all mistaken. You know, um, multiple sclerosis, if you were to use um, Google, anything um, can be caused from multiple sclerosis because it's coming from your central nervous system. But as you said, there are things that are much more likely to occur. So you can get numb and tingliness in your hands from carpal tunnel syndrome. So that's a very common thing. So the process of diagnosing is really excluding 
other things because multiple sclerosis is a rare disease. So um, we do lab work to exclude infections, other type of um, abnormalities that might cause um, persons to have those symptoms. And then the MRI is a very good tool. Um, Sometimes persons have to get uh, lumbar punctures, but the average time to diagnosis really depends upon how good a person is able to give a history. And um, so there are persons that have been diagnosed very quick, quickly, and there are some persons that you know, have struggled for months prior to getting their diagnosis. You know, if someone is um, by themselves and they uh, begin to experience some of these symptoms, do you find that a a person without family members there or someone to observe things that maybe they themselves aren't paying that much attention to, do you find that diagnosis is a little bit quicker, a little bit uh, more accurate? And just how important is a support group once you're diagnosed and you decide or you, you know that you have to live with MS? Well, support persons are are hands down extremely helpful with persons who have multiple sclerosis. But yes, some of the more subtle symptoms as far as when coming to a diagnosis, uh, an individual may recognize more obvious symptoms like maybe some weakness or profound numbness or visual problems. But some of the other symptoms, minor changes in in their walking or their thinking processes um, or even their um, fatigue level are sometimes much better um, reported by family members. So that is extremely important to have a support person, be it a family member or a friend. And then again, um, as far as going forward with the disease. This is a chronic disease that we don't have a cure for, and it is very, um, can be very interrupting in their life. So having persons to support them, to give them strength, to um, be there when they're having good days and bad days um, is extremely um, helpful to them. And I found most persons that are successful do have a support person. There's an effort that I've become aware of. It's called uh, Hashtag uh, My Support Hero. Uh, could you talk about this initiative and um, talk about any, any role that you're playing in it? Sure. I am working with Biogen to raise MS awareness. Um, and we they have a, a support program where you can access through Hashtag My Support Hero. And you can go on to that and give appreciation for those persons who support you um, if you have multiple sclerosis every day. So it can be your family members, it can be your best friend, it can be anyone who um, gives you that support. And I encourage persons to do that. I also encourage persons to go to abovems.com to learn more about um, support and um, support that Biogen can give them in their struggles. You mentioned one resource at hashtag my support hero. Um, how can people get involved specifically with that uh, with that program? Well, they access that through either Facebook or um, Twitter, and mm-hmm. they then put their comments on that about their support person. So it's acknowledging the persons that have been helpful to them to Mm -hmm. live with the day-to-day challenges of multiple sclerosis. And sharing it forward gets the word out even more, yeah? Oh, yes, yes. The more um, that person share, the more the the word gets out because there's a a big misperception as to what this disease is. So awareness is the best way we have to move research forward and help persons Um, with this um, dramatic disease. What one great piece of advice would you like to give today to uh, folks that are living with MS and maybe those that are supporting them? Well, my biggest advice would be to uh, build resilience by educating yourself, educating yourself about the disease, educating yourself about your symptoms, be uh, very accommodating to um, having a variety of different persons educate you, but also being close to those persons that support you because persons who support you are um, instrumental in helping you maintain resilience, which is something you're going to need 
to um, deal with the day-to-day challenges of a chronic disease state. And uh, finally, where can our listeners go and learn more about multiple sclerosis nursing? They can go on to the IOMSN, I-O-M-S-N, the International Organization of Multiple Sclerosis Nurses, uh, and that we have a very nice website, and there's lots of tools off of that website to learn more about multiple sclerosis. And, of course, above ms.com is also a great tool for persons to look for um, information about multiple sclerosis. Well, I appreciate you talking with us today, Tricia. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Tricia Pagnotta. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud.